Hey everyone, there's a new streaming tool out which has completely changed the way I multi-stream. I am now able to send out my stream to any of my platforms, a lot more than you see sampled here, I'll show you in a minute, or all of them at the same time, even at different encodes, all from my PC for free. So let me show you how it works, it's really cool. And then I need to explain the pros and cons between using this or a service like Restream. Some of you are going to need to stay with Restream. And then for those who are gonna use this, I'll show you how to configure it. So here's my OBS environment. There's the Atom Multistream dock. But first I need to explain this dock over here. You see there's, there's two of me, I have two preview windows. I'm using another plugin called Atom Vertical from the same team that gives me another preview window gives me another uh, another encode to work with. I was using it before I had Atom Multistream. I was sending my main out to, to YouTube and the vertical out to YouTube Shorts. So now that I have Atom Multistream, I have complete control over where I send these two feeds. So let me show you what I have set up here. At the top, there's built-in stream. That's what I had already set up in OBS. Before I installed this, I was going to YouTube. So when I click that, it just goes to that same YouTube stream that I had set up before. And then below that, I added Let's do video Facebook. I don't really stream on Facebook, but I wanted to see if it would work. Then, if I want to stream on LinkedIn, that's under that. Aver is one of my clients. We've been considering doing a live stream on their YouTube channel. If they send me a temporary key, I pop it right in there, and I can stream to their YouTube or their LinkedIn. I have a, a new friend uh, from LinkedIn, a fellow content creator, uh, someone with a lot of si uh, similar interests, and we've been discussing just for fun, not connected with our day jobs, doing a co-stream together, perhaps on both of our channels at the same time. So if he gives me a temporary key for his YouTube and LinkedIn, I press this, I press this, I press this, I press this. We're live on my channels, we're live on his channels. And of course, we're all learning that vertical is where the views and the clicks are. So we have control over our vertical canvas and we can send that to YouTube Shorts. TikTok, a little tricky to get a license, but you can do it. Twitter, I put it there just to show but you have to pay $5 and be a member to live stream on Twitter, which is the only platform that does that. Um, I, <laughs> you know, they want me to pay to give them content that they can then advertise to raise their revenue. So uh, yeah, okay. But just to show you that it's there. Um, and of course, if my, my, my new friend wants to pop it on his shorts as well. And uh, I have Let's Do Video LinkedIn also as vertical. I'm not sure if LinkedIn is better at vertical or horizontal, so I could try one or the other. I can select whichever one of these I want to do for any stream. Now let me explain why this won't work for everyone. This graphic shows how Atom Multistream works. As you can see, it's really simple. It just sends a direct signal to each platform. Now that means you need enough bandwidth to support all those streams. I stream at six megabytes. So if I'm doing three streams, I better have 18 megabytes. If you're on fiber, it's not an issue. If you have limited bandwidth, you might want to stick with Restream. With the cloud service like Restream, you're only sending one signal to that service. If you're streaming at six megabytes, you're only sending that six megabytes. And then the stream is, well, it's relaying it from there. So basically the advantages of a cloud service are limited bandwidth use, and the advantages of this are more power and flexibility. So let's get it up and running for you. Installation's really easy. You just go to the website, I'll put a, a link below, download the file and run the installation file. It puts it into your OBS. Then, the next time you open up OBS, you're not going to see anything different. And you're going to say, hey, what's going on here? But then you're going to remember that I told you, it's a dock. So you have to enable it. So you go to the Docs tab, and there you see, Ada Multistream, check it, and that will add it to your, your UI, and you can drag it around and put it wherever you want. So next, how do we add our platforms? I'm going to delete all these and show you what it's like to start from scratch. Okay, so this is what a fresh install looks like. And as I mentioned before, it starts with the built-in stream there. That's whatever your OBS is set to. If I click that, it'll go live to, in my case, to YouTube. At the bottom of the dock is a cog. Let's open that up. And here is our settings panel. Now, one minor nitpick I have, this general tab really doesn't need to be here. It's a nice welcome to Atom when you first see it. But the four buttons are the same as the four tabs at the left here. So I think we should see this once and that should go away. But that's just that's just a minor thing. Um, support the team. They're a great team. If you need help with this, you can ask me, but you're better off going to their Discord. I'm going to have to do another video on the phenomenon of Discord for help as opposed to contact centers. It's really something special. But what we really want to focus on is the vertical canvas and the main canvas. 
So let's add our outputs. There's only one button, so we can't go wrong. And we, here we have some options. LinkedIn isn't listed, but you can add it as an other service. Let's use YouTube for our, our first example. Now, I normally wouldn't do this because my built-in stream is YouTube, so this is, is redundant with it, but just to show you how it works. I'll give it a name. And if you're streaming on YouTube, you should know where your YouTube stream key is. Uh, but if you have trouble finding it, they even gave you a link here. So I would click that. I would go to my creator dashboard. I would get my key. For now, I'm just going to put in a fake key. And there we have it. I can save. And it's up there and it'll work. Now, there's a few settings that I didn't show you. Let's go back there really quick. So here's the YouTube output that we just created, and you see there's two buttons next to it. The output settings, that's just the information we, we just entered, we, if we need to change something. And then the advanced settings are our video and audio settings. For video settings, I keep everything on main encoder. That keeps things easy on my PC. So basically, the, the stream that my computer creates, that it's sending to the first, the built-in stream, it's going to send that same exact thing to all of those streams that I had on that list before. If you're an advanced streamer and you really want to optimize, instead of main encoder, you can click the drop down and choose your encoder and select all the encoder settings. A decent computer can handle a few encodes. This isn't something to avoid. This is this is a power feature of A to Multistream. But if you, if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably going to want to stick with the main encoder. Under audio settings, you choose your encoder. There's no option to use the main encoder, but Audio is light, it doesn't matter quite as much. Now one big power feature is the audio track. You can choose your audio track. This is important to avoid uh, YouTube copyright issues. What you could do is you can send track 2 to YouTube and then in your audio mixer, if you go to advanced properties, you can choose which sources go to which tracks. So you could have your microphone going to all the tracks, but Let's say Rainbow Smoke, I don't know what that is, but let's say it was copyrighted music. I could send it so it's not going to two. Just uncheck them all just in case. So now my microphone is going to one, which could be Twitch or LinkedIn or whatever, along with the music, which I'm not worried about on those platforms, but the music is not going to go to YouTube because I already got one warning there. So we have to be careful about that. So that's pretty much it, but let's create a vertical stream just to show you what it's like. Again, I go down to my settings cog, and this time I'll go to the vertical canvas tab, and it's, it's literally exactly the same. You click add output, you choose your platform. If you wanted to do LinkedIn, you would do other service. And with LinkedIn, you have to go to LinkedIn. It's kind of a pain. You have to create the event, get the key, get the server cut and pasted here. And then you would create it. And if I want to do a fake one, I'll just put in one and one for now. Call this linked LinkedIn LDV. And when I click OK, it puts it under that, under the vertical tab. And now when it's time to go live, I just click my buttons and I go live on whichever ones I want to go live on, whenever I want to go live on them. I really hope this was helpful. I'm actually going to recreate all those outputs I had at the beginning of this video. I'm, I'm going to use them. It was easy. It's going to take me two minutes to get them all set up again. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.